Hello and welcome. We're going to be talking about unlocking AI for the enterprise today and what uh, Dell with NVIDIA and VMware can do together with a, a series of, of outcomes that can really help you get started on your AI journey. So we're going to be talking about virtualizing GPUs with NVIDIA and VMware. I'm Justin King, Product Manager for Integrated Solutions, uh, handling AI and analytics uh, deliverables. And I'm joined by my lead architect, Bala. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Bala Chandrasekhar. I'm part of uh, Integrated Solutions Engineering Team. So incorporating AI into the data center in the enterprise is a challenge. We've typically looked at it as a siloed approach and that brings up more questions. And so the use of virtualization for AI, enterprise organizations worldwide are using VMware not for, for delivering AI, but in one way or another, they have VMware already in their environments. And so maintaining consistent operations, governance of their data centers, multi-cloud environments, they're, they're already working with virtualization. So this really makes a good start for us to look at how do we leverage that and build on that to really help incorporate AI in, into the data center. And so as these organizations are capitalizing more and more data, coming from infrastructure, coming from applications, solutions, as well as uh, sensors and cameras and things like that. How do I handle these massive amounts of, of data? Well, AI is one way to get the answers out of that data and be able to turn that into business outcomes. And so artificial intelligence is emerging as an essential ingredient to becoming a data-driven enterprise. However, incorporating AI into the enterprise data center can be a challenge. IT teams typically build separate systems for these workloads, and some even offload this to the AI teams themselves. But data engineers and data scientists don't want to be dealing with infrastructure and managing specific hardware, software, accelerators, and tool sets. While developers can create applications anywhere using containers, putting those applications into production lacks predictability and stability, while also raising concerns about security. So in light of some of these challenges, Dell Technologies, NVIDIA, and VMware have been working to democratize and unlock AI for the enterprise. And during this discussion, we hope you'll get a lot more out of that on what we can do for you. Working with NVIDIA, NVIDIA has pioneered and accelerated computing to tackle challenges that ordinary computers cannot. This requires more than just a powerful chip. We achieve incredible speed ups by investing in research and engineering for the full solution stack from the chip and systems to the algorithms and applications they run. The creation of our CUDA programming model and data center GPU platform for parallel processing to a general purpose computing. Today, more than 2000 applications are accelerated by NVIDIA hardware, including the top 15 in high performance computing. More and more ecosystem partners like VMware, Cloudera, Red Hat are, in are integrating acceleration features into their software. And so NVIDIA is the market leader in acceleration of the entire AI pipeline from data loading and processing to training and inferencing, bringing AI to the world's largest industries. With solutions such as recommendation engines, augmented reality, autonomous vehicles, and accelerating research in healthcare to help combat COVID as examples. What about VMware? VMware has been around uh, uh, for just over 20 years now being the pioneer in virtualization, being able to maximize the consumption of resources that's leveraged over into the public cloud and bridging on-prem scenarios with hybrid cloud and creating a cloud infrastructure. They bring the security because everything is in software. It's a software-defined data center. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it's already in use by 99% of enterprise customers in one way or another, whether it's a virtual workstation all the way up to a full anomaly detection pipeline. So what are the enterprise really trying to do with, with this? How does AI get implemented? What, what, are, what is it able to do? Well, we know it's achievable. We have all of these technologies. We have these accelerators. We have these frameworks that are available to us. And the mindset has continued on from the DevOps type of uh, delivery into this MLOps and AIOps uh, uh, driven software, uh, data-driven uh, cycles. But AI is now achievable, and every enterprise is looking to integrate AI into every aspect of their business. HR departments want to use it for talent acquisitions, 
scanning resumes using NLP to, to provide based job profiles uh, to shortlist the best candidates so that I can have time saved analyzing and going straight to the candidates that are, that are there that, that make the most sense. Marketing and sales want to determine pricing, demand forecasting. IT wants to detect cybersecurity threats and fraudulent activity in real time. We've all interacted with virtual assistants and chatbots. This is all powered by AI, but it's not an application you just download and run. There is no one size fits all. And so to enable the enterprise with the tools they need to build and deliver AI outcomes, this requires an understanding of how the enterprise operates today. However, as I mentioned, these challenges are complex. Architecting a new AI, AI solution consists of software. This means vendor selection, hardware requirements, a proof of concept. This can all take several months. Why? Because each vendor focuses on its own piece. There is no integration between hardware and software. Your team must know servers, GPUs, networking, security, storage. In addition, virtualizing GPUs is largely a manual, complicated, and time-consuming task. Then each software vendor may require specific versions of operating systems or container platforms, which are compatible with the data engineers and data scientists' preferred libraries and frameworks. Once it's all assembled, a solution requires extensive integration and tuning to avoid failed jobs, software versioning incompatibilities, or unbalanced configurations that can result in underutilized resources. From there, the different combinations of frameworks and libraries make ongoing maintenance of the environment a complex and time-consuming task. This can all be done on the same platform when deploying the Dell Technologies validated design for AI, which we'll get more into details within a minute. Another challenge, we haven't been able to take full advantage of our data and the results are too slow. Data is growing at an astronomical rate and it's impossible to take full advantage of it manually to get insights. The speed of AI-driven automated image and pattern detection can help provide faster insights like prediction or anomaly detection. And with historical data sets, you can get deeper insights into, for example, buying behavior. While most organizations know that AI can provide faster, better, and deeper data insights, some don't know how to effectively leverage and scale existing resources while maximizing utilization of AI workloads. And then one more, that more commonly known is we don't have the in-house expertise for AI. AI and related technologies are complex and emerging very quickly. Trained, experienced staff is hard to come by and many organizations have not had the time to develop the in-house skills required to succeed with AI, ML or DL architectures. Unfortunately, this may become evident as you attempt to move AI applications from proof of concept into production. It's no surprise that 80% of AI projects never make it to production. Dell Technologies working with NVIDIA and VMware, we take all the heavy lifting needed to architect, build, and deliver AI outcomes. We have collaborated and we have built and we are delivering the VMware, NVIDIA, Dell Technologies AI platform. So how do we simplify this? Well, obviously, Working across engineering teams, we've able to come up with a validated design for AI. They report that these validated designs can be 18 to 20% faster in getting configurations and integration decisions made and achieved. I can save 12 employee hours a week with automated reconciliation and reduce support requirements by 25%. And we have a quote here from a, a customer of, of ours, the University of Pisa. NVIDIA AI Enterprise allowed us to expand our support for our researchers and students who utilize data analytics and AI deep learning while making these applications easier to deploy and manage. What about faster AI insights? These validated designs for AI deliver and utilize VxRail for an unprecedented performance with enterprise AI and integrated with NVIDIA AI Enterprise. Power scale storage improves AI model training accuracy and faster access to larger data sets, enabling live inferencing at scale to drive real-time actionable responses. VxRail enables 44% faster deployment of new VMs, while validated designs enable 18x faster AI models. 
two to three days instead of one to two months. Another quote from our customer at the University of Pisa, our testing has shown that these latest collaborations deliver the full potential of our GPU accelerated virtualized infrastructure at near bare metal speeds. What about the expertise needed here? Obviously NVIDIA is a market leader. Dell and VMware are working together. We're able to collaborate. We have teams with extensive technical domain and industry expertise that understands the workload characteristics and requirements. This all goes into our validated designs. We, our engineering team, as Bala will talk about in a little bit, they'll test and tune for performance, efficiency, and reliability. And then that's what we deliver as a collaboration, three-way branded, the documentation of the design, the implementation best practices, and we continually collaborate and update with our partners to incorporate the latest technologies, software stacks, and capabilities. The data center is growing. Some of these challenges have been how we're handling workloads today. AI inferencing and training has been siloed. IT doesn't know how to handle those requests. Those requests, as mentioned, are left to the, to the data scientists, the data engineers. But as we move tomorrow into an evolving emerging data center, we no longer should be bound by these, these limitations of siloed approaches. We should be able to run a job on any server and be able to have access to the resources needed, whether it's high-speed networking, GPU acceleration, the data lake in a number of storage factors. All of this should be dynamically made available through software. And that's what the utilization of VMware and the NVIDIA stack helps us achieve bringing tomorrow and making it available for you today. But what defines the enterprise platform, the enterprise AI platform? Well, I'll need my ML ops, I need auto ML. I'm gonna be doing some edge inferencing. I need vertical apps that I'm gonna be working with, healthcare, financial services, et cetera. And so really I need to leverage the NVIDIA AI enterprise to really help understand and, and, and use these outcomes with data analytics applications. I need the GPU to be able to be virtualized so that I can be shared and optimized within the infrastructure. And then I need to be able to have the performance of screaming bare metal and maintain that as I scale up. To do that, the cloud, the public cloud today has, has standardized around the use of containerization and Kubernetes has been a lead management of the container platforms. And so working with VMware, we have VMware Tanzu with their containers and virtual machines. These can run side by side with your existing legacy applications today and still access the GPUs and uh, high speed internet. And then from, from Dell's perspective, we bring the, the consumption, we bring the resources. We've got high performing powerage servers. We've got appliances where we can take the stand up work and make it as simple as clicking a button with a BX rail. And then as we move forward, we will have apex level solutions where you can actually consume this uh, in a co-located or on-premise fashion. And obviously this all depends on hardware from NVIDIA with GPU, ConnectX SmartNix and Bluefield DPUs. But doing a validated design, I typically go after the DIY approach, but customers today, they can go to the hyperscalers and just click on a couple of buttons and have it ready for them. And so from Dell's approach here, we need to cater for both. We know there will always be customers that want to do this themselves. They'll have unique requirements and they'll need to build it themselves. And so providing guidance with that, but what if I can also take a lot of that guidance and package it up so that I have a, an appliance model that I can just turn on and start using once it's delivered on-prem. This is really an easy button for the enterprise in delivering AI applications. And so with this, the Dell Technologies Validated Design allows a number of things. We have our architecture with our power scale storage, our PowerEdge servers and VxRail appliances. We have the NVIDIA GPUs and SmartNix. We have the VMware vSphere level with Tanzu and the NVIDIA AI Enterprise. And that allows us to be the foundation to deliver MLOps edge in edge inferencing and virtual AI applications. So the, the route to market that we take in helping you as a customer learn how to get started in AI or adopt AI 
for virtual environments, we have some white papers today on how, how it is done, what you need to know, and what are the expected outcomes. We have a design guide. This will help you go through that decision-making process. How big or small of an environment do I need? What components do I need? And how do I need to configure those? And shortly, we'll have an implementation guide, which is currently under development, that will tell you how to, in that DIY scenario, build this yourself. We've tested this. Val is gonna go through some of the performance and some of the configurations that, that we've learned from. And they're not all as marketed on, on paper. We've, we found some, some differences here. We want to be transparent and, and show that of what we've learned with these configurations, what the gotchas are in some scenarios. We're providing you recommendations on t-shirt sizing on how to adopt AI as the validated design, providing these performance characteristics so we can give you a number of, of server configurations that you can just start with and order today. You can order the whole environment, the validated design as an appliance today with a VxRail and a power scale uh, with one or two SKUs from talking with your Dell salesperson. If you need more advanced configurations, i.e. I need more GPUs than what's possible in a VxRail environment, then maybe you wanna go with one of the PowerEdge configurations and we can help you with that as well. But in short here, the Dell Technologies validated design for AI covers everything that you need to get started uh, in virtualizing AI and, or adopting your AI journey to a virtualized environment. Let's dive a little bit more into the components here. So VxRail, why build it when you can have a turnkey environment? Jointly engineered with Dell Technologies and VMware to deliver a seamless, curated and optimized hyper-converged experience updated to support the next generation hardware configurations, certified by VMware, NVIDIA, and Dell Technologies. Make it the ideal platform to start with when you virtualize IT, sorry, AI. Factory installed and ready to run, how much time will that save you? NVIDIA GPUs, the Ampere line of GPUs are here and showing some great success. The A100, is the high end and the A30 for the mid range for your compute, compute workloads. NVLink allows you to optimize multiple GPUs within a single GPU by partitioning. SRIOV is part of the vGPU now, so it allows you to get that as near to bare metal performance as possible. Multi instance GPU or MIG, this allows me to, to provide a fraction of a GPU to a given workload. And what about multi-node training? Well, Bart is going to go through a lot of this in a lot more detail, so I'm not going to waste his time here going through the, the spills. And so I'll move on to the next one. We have the Dell EMC power switch based on open standards that free the data center from outdated proprietary approaches, delivers future ready technology that helps improve performance with lower cost of ownership and management while flexible to support the newer high-speed interconnects utilizing RDMA. Storage, Dell EMC power scale for the data lake. Storage designed to reduce complexity and optimize results. Ease adoption and management to enable transformative decision-making, business growth, and operational efficiency. Available in hybrid configurations for large file systems and static data, or for all flash configurations to quickly deliver large amounts of data to AI models, speeding up the execution time for achieving results. Most of AI has been born in the cloud, where resources are easily available and the modern technologies created with cloud native initiatives like containerization. VMware has added containerization with the addition of Tanzu, which allows Kubernetes type clusters to be defined and deployed alongside virtual machines, allowing the coexistence of both environments within the same familiar operational experience and lifecycle management. VxRail with vSphere 7.0 Update 3 allows vSphere Tanzu to be more easily integrated with GPUs and available for consumption than ever before. And NVIDIA AI Enterprise is a suite of technologies to deliver end-to-end -end AI, from infrastructure optimizations for vGPU and CUDA to cloud-native optimizations of GPU and network operators for VMware Tanzu to communicate and manage GPU and smart NICs for the likes of TensorFlow, PyTorch, or NVIDIA Rapids runtimes, TensorRT, a neural networking inferencing optimizer, and Triton inferencing server, all key components to deliver reliable, 
and supported AI outcomes bundled up in one solution. This is required for virtualized environments and simplifies AI with management, orchestration, and end-to-end -end workflows. So let's get a little deeper into the conversation here. We've talked about the validated design, what it enlists, in, in but let's get a little deeper into some of those configurations and some of the capabilities of the AI platform. Bala, over to you. Thank you, Justin. As Justin mentioned, we wanted to, we wanted a, we wanted to walk through the configurations we validated as part of Dell Technologies validated design for AI. So these are the three uh, uh, configurations uh, and you can select one of them based on your AI needs. Uh, on the left, we have the uh, mainstream performance uh, configuration. So these are PowerEdge uh, R750 or it could be PowerEdge R7525. One is Intel based, the other is AMD based. Uh, you can have up to two uh, A30 GPUs in them. Uh, as Justin mentioned, so we have the A100 GPUs as well as the A30, and we'll uh, kind of uh, talk about the differences between these two. Uh, and this, uh, this, um, these platforms support up to 25 drives for vCell for your internal uh, virtual machine storage. Additionally, you can have your power scale storage uh, for your uh, NFS connectivity, and that's where you typically have your uh, AI data sets. Uh, and and uh, across the different configurations, we have uh, various uh, power scale model again, based on your uh, needs. Uh, then we have the mainstream performance. Uh, this is VxRail 670F, and this is a uh, HCI appliance. Excuse me. Like Justin mentioned, uh, VxRail has seamless integration into VMware, including vSAN. Uh, it's a full stack management, and uh, think of it as an easy button uh, that has easy deployment configuration and, and management. So if you uh, if you want an HCI appliance uh, based experience, uh, you would go with that, uh, and that supports both uh, A100 and A30 GPUs. Uh, in our configuration, we are recommending up to two uh, A30 GPUs. Uh, again, similarly, you can have your data uh, externally in PowerScale uh, F600 uh, or Flash Array. Finally, uh, for max performance, uh, we have PowerEdge R750XA that is designed for accelerators. So that is the Dell platform that's specifically designed to all GPUs and have really high density. Uh, so there you can have up to four A100 GPUs it also supports NVLink Bridge, and we'll talk about why that is important, uh, but, but that really allows you to scale uh, your uh, training jobs. Uh, and even if you want to train beyond that, uh, you can do it with uh, GPU Direct RDMA capability with 100 gig network adapters that are supported in, in the uh, max performance uh, configuration. Uh, again, similarly uh, as the other configuration, you can have your uh, NFS data store in power scale F800, and all those are all flash configurations. So in the next slide, we'll, or in the slide, we'll walk through in detail on what these uh, uh, configurations are. Um, so, um, so we talked about all the compute server models, right? For CPU, uh, uh, if you're going with R750 or 7525, you can go with Intel or AMD, like I mentioned before. Uh, Intel CPUs, we recommend Gold CPU and above, uh, and AMD would be the Epic uh, 7000 uh, series. For memory, uh, again, we have uh, these uh, T-shirt size recommendations. You can go from 256 GB to 512, or even you can increase up to one terabytes. Uh, we already talked about GPU uh, network adapter. Uh, we have ConnectX uh, network adapters, uh, 25 gigs. Uh, and if you want multi-node training, uh, we can even uh, update them to 100 gigs. And we'll talk about why that is a requirement and why that's needed uh, in just a few minutes. The network switches recommended here also uh, 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 is um, relevant uh, is, uh, is based on the uh, network adapters. So you have 25 gig network switches as well as the uh, 100 gig uh, network switches. Uh, we have vSphere uh, 7.2. Uh, we are validated U2, U3 is just available. So that's all validated as part of our Dell Technologies validated design. Um, we have internal storage uh, for vSAN, uh, and we talked about using PowerScale for your external data lake storage. All of this is um, uh, supports NVIDIA AI Enterprise 1.0, and we'll also talk about this uh, in a little bit of detail. 
So this, this is your uh, T-shirt sizing. And now let's look at uh, all these uh, components a little bit more in detail. Uh, so you have a better understanding of, of why we made these choices. And we'll also provide some uh, performance data as well as some configuration uh, information. First, let us look at uh, the GPU and network adapters. Uh, both are uh, uh, available from NVIDIA. So we have the A100 GPU and then the A30 GPU. A100 is for uh, um, large uh, DL uh, training jobs, scientific research and data analytics. Uh, it, it is the fastest uh, GPU available uh, from NVIDIA. It supports up to seven mix. Um, so so if, if you want, you can either partition them and run smaller jobs, or you can use the entire GPU or even uh, aggregate the GPUs for, for large uh, AI train. Uh, for mainstream uh, compute uh, and for AI inference, uh, we have A30. So that's, uh, that's uh, one of the GPUs available uh, from NVIDIA. So you can have a uh, language processing, conversational AI, or recommendation systems uh, running on that. So depending on your um, uh, AI requirements and, and the type of jobs that you're running, uh, you can select one of these two GPUs. Uh, for network adapters, we have ConnectX uh, network adapters, uh, both 25 gig and 100 gigs are supported. Uh, we also have uh, Bluefield DPUs uh, as supported as part of this configuration. And uh, DPUs are new class of network adapters that have processing capability within them. Um, um, more uh, of those hardware capabilities are going to be made available in the software. And in, in the coming few releases, you'll see how this particular capability is, is being uh, taken advantage of in our uh, configurations. So let's look at the next slide. Uh, and, and let's talk about uh, uh, how GPUs are virtualized. Right? When you virtualize a GPU, uh, you can either partition them into smaller uh, instances and have a smaller workloads running, or you can aggregate the GPUs uh, and use them for uh, larger uh, training jobs. So let's look at the different ways in which you can partition and, and as well as aggregate uh, the GPUs. Uh, for GPU partitioning, uh, we have a uh, multi-instance GPU. Uh, most of you are already familiar with that. Uh, so that allows you to partition, let's say, an A100 into seven instances or A30 into four instances. Um, the key benefit of MIG is guaranteed quality of service. And that is because each MIG instance comes with dedicated compute and memory resources. Um, so, and that really plays well, if you think about it, with virtualization, right? Uh, and that's what the figure illustrates. Uh, we have a A100 GPU, we are partitioned into different sizes and we have provided them in, to the virtual machines. Virtual machines, as you already know, uh, have CPU and memory uh, allocation and isolation. Now with make you get GPU isolation as well. I think the key thing behind this, the key takeaway for me is now GPU resource is being consumed just like your CPU and memory, right? And that ties back to all the things that Justin mentioned. So once you have that capability, all your AI workloads, uh, which are using uh, GPU, um, can run uh, alongside with uh, with your regular data center application, and you can use the same tools to manage and monitor. So that's that's one of the key things with Meg and with uh, GPU partitioning. So there's also another way to partition, which is uh, GPU temporal partition, which is basically time sliced uh, GPU that is supported even in legacy GPUs as well. Uh, so if for some reason you don't want to use Meg, uh, and and uh, there may be a couple of other uh, reasons you want. Uh, and that's being uh, documented in our design guides, then you can use your uh, uh, temporal partitioning and, and, and use that partitioning as well. But we believe MIG is the best uh, use of uh, partitioning because it, it ties very well with virtualization as well. So that's probably uh, what would be more popularly used. So that is GPU partitioning. Uh, let's talk about uh, GPU aggregation. So in, in, when you partition your uh, GPU, if you want to run, run smaller workloads, right? If you want to run inference or, or model development, but let's say you want to do training and these are large models, uh, then you may want to aggregate the GPUs. Uh, so that's where you can aggregate multiple GPUs 
uh, in a single server uh, and make it available to a virtual machine. Uh, and, and we have a slide that talks about this, a little bit of detail, and this is used for larger models. And if you want to even go beyond that, you can aggregate GPUs across uh, multiple servers and do a multi-node training for large uh, complex models. And let's we, we'll talk about that a uh, little bit in detail momentarily. So, but let's look at MIG and how does it perform uh, 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 and what are the things that we noticed in the lab. Um, so this is a, a little bit of a, a complex slide. So let me try to break, break it down. And I wanted to highlight the key uh, uh, observations we saw, right? What we basically did was we ran various scenarios as listed in the table. Um, and uh, uh, these scenarios are basically uh, partitioning the MIG into different configurations and running some load on that. Uh, the, the load that we used here is inference um, using ResNet. So this is inference and an inference job typically doesn't uh, take up the entire CP, right? It, it's, it's, a lightly, uh, it's a light load. So for inference scenarios, let's see what happens. And, and scenario one to five is where we use a single instance uh, of the GPU. Uh, so the, the size of the uh, instance varies from scenario one to five as shown here. Uh, and then in scenario six, seven, and eight, uh, we are basically running multiple instances uh, and we are running multiple uh, inference workloads on, on those. Um, so le let me highlight the observation and, and, and what we got after, out of this. Uh, let's compare scenario one and scenario eight. In scenario one, we have the entire GPU and we are running inference on it, right? And, and there's just one inference job. You see the total uh, bandwidth uh, made available from there is uh, 3,800 images per second. Um, but in scenario eight, we have basically partitioned that into seven partitions and we are running the same inference job. As I mentioned earlier, right? Inference doesn't take up your entire GPU. And that's why in scenario one, you're not seeing a whole lot of uh, uh, bandwidth out of it. But when you break it into multiple instances and you're running multiple jobs on it, you can actually get the overall uh, performance and overall utilization of the GPU improve. Uh, and again, this is specifically for lighter load like inference, right? So uh, we found that it is best if you use make uh, for, for workloads like inferences to basically break down and you see the overall increase in, in utilization. Uh, the other thing uh, I wanted to focus on is this um, burnt orange color, and you can compare this scenario five with scenario eight. This is basically running the same job, and irrespective of what other instances are running, uh, this particular uh, instance always give you uh, almost the same performance. Here, that's the images per second, and it's around 1,200 uh, plus uh, bandwidth uh, images per second. So what does that tell you? So irrespective of what the other instances are doing, maybe they are ideal or idle, like in scenario five, or maybe they are running something else as in scenario eight, right? You get your guaranteed uh, performance because of your uh, dedicated uh, resources in GPU. So that's one of the cool uh, features in MIG, and that's what we, uh, we wanted to uh, prove uh, uh, in this graph, uh, and hope that's helpful. So in the next slide, uh, let's see uh, how we aggregate uh, GPU resources into a single virtual machine. Um, so here we have two NVIDIA GPUs, and we talked about NVLink, right? NVLink is required uh, in order to get the most performance out of it for multi-GPU. Uh, um, so we have the scenario where you have two GPUs, and they are connected by NVLink, and they are made available to the uh, virtual machine. Uh, and uh, on, on, on the right-hand side, we have a table that shows uh, the various PowerEdge server configuration and, uh, and only the PowerEdge 750XA, which is again designed for uh, uh, GPUs, uh, supports NVLink bridge. And in that configuration, since NVLink bridge is required, you can uh, uh, allocate more than uh, one GPU to a single virtual machine and take utilizer. You utilize it for your uh, deep learning job uh, for, for training your deep, deep learning job. So, but that's still again in a single server, right? What if you want to take advantage of uh, your GPU resources across multiple servers? So that's where multi node training comes in and, uh, and you use this capability called GPU direct RDMA. It's basically an RDMA, right? 
and it's built on uh, RDMA or converged Ethernet or Rocky. Uh, we found that uh, using this uh, capability, you can significantly uh, improve your multi-node training performance. Uh, and, and this is how it works, right? So in, in the figure, you're seeing two powered servers. It has both ConnectX adapters and GPU. You are uh, uh, allocating them to the virtual machines. These virtual machines typically run, let's say, TensorFlow with Horowat, which is the distributed framework. Uh, and when you dedicate the GPU, as well as dedicate the ConnectX network adapters using the pass-through mode, um, you are basically avoiding memory copies. So data from one GPU to the other GPU and another server goes through your uh, ConnectX network adapter using RDMA, and that avoids memory copies between your uh, through, uh, that goes through your CPU and uh, utilizes CPU less. Uh, and and we recommend using 100 gigs of that. So this is basically a configuration and capability that that uh, you can take advantage of uh, if you need multi-node training across multiple servers. Uh, and, and, and as the slide says, this is a little bit uh, uh, complex uh, to set up and test all these requirements, but we're hoping that the future releases uh, will make things easier. Uh, building on this, in the next slide, you are seeing uh, how do you access your data uh, that is in your power scale uh, NFS storage faster. And this is again based on RDMA technology, right? And, and this technology, this capability from NVIDIA is called uh, GPU direct storage and our power scale uh, storage supports it. So again, RDMA, uh, this avoids memory copy. So your data in your NFS is directly copied onto your GPU memory using your uh, ConnectX network adapters and your network switch that supports Rocky uh, and, and you, your AI model, which is being trained will have faster access to your data. And in the lab, we are able to achieve uh, 256 uh, gigabytes per second for read operation. Uh, read will probably what is being used for your uh, AI training, right? So for read operations, and, and this is on bare metal, right? So we are, we are trying to uh, replicate this on virtualization as well, but I think uh, we expect similar results. And you can also see how it linearly scales across uh, your uh, uh, F600 uh, power scale nodes. So as the number of nodes increases, we are able to see uh, linear scalability on the bandwidth that the GPU is consuming uh, when your data set is in your uh, power scale. So this again improves your data access for your AI models. So those are some of the capabilities uh, 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 for when you're using GPU virtualization. Uh, all of this is supported in VMware vSphere 7.0, um, and uh, the U3 was uh, released uh, just a few weeks back. Uh, we are seeing near bare metal performance uh, on, on GPUs, around 5% difference, and that was the graph shows, and this result is, is uh, confirmed from testing by you know, both uh, NVIDIA and VMware as well. Uh, vSphere supports uh, uh, MIG uh, multi-user GPU. One of the cool features that I like is uh, when you have MIG uh, enabled uh, GPUs in your server, the MIG profiles are automatically created. In the older versions, you have to go uh, create them yourself, but the MIG uh, profiles are automatically created so you can assign them directly to your virtual machines as, as shown in the, in the uh, screenshot uh, above. Uh, other capabilities with the VMware vSphere is vMotion. Uh, so that's really important. So if you want to do some maintenance on your server, you can migrate your uh, VMs that are using GPU uh, to another server and bring the server down. Uh, vSphere also supports DRS initial placement. Uh, so you create your VM, you tell what GPU you want. Uh, obviously, you tell what memory and disk you want. And then once you power on the VM, vSphere will automatically place it on the server, which, which, is, uh, which is rightly suited for it. So the initial placement uh, for load balancing and, and avoiding bottlenecks is supported uh, with vSphere. And also VM suspend and resume capabilities are supported in VMware. Um, so all of this is uh, made available uh, to you using NVIDIA AI Enterprise. Um, so NVIDIA AI Enterprise 1.0 was recently launched and that is one of the key component in Dell Technologies validated design for AI. Um, so some of the uh, uh, pieces in, uh, in the AIE includes 
your uh, data science uh, and uh, frameworks. It's TensorFlow, PyTorch, Rapids, TensorRT, and Triton Infrared Server. I think this audience will be familiar with what those are, so we want to go through that. Uh, it also supports uh, the GPU operator, which will be required when we have Tanzu available, as well as NVIDIA vGPU, MagnumIO, and CUDA X infrastructure components. So everything is now uh, enabled through software, right? So NVIDIA AI Enterprise using that, uh, which is fully supported by NVIDIA and, and, and uh, licensed is made uh, uh, available uh, to, to you to, for, for your data science needs. So uh, I want to summarize this uh, with uh, all the uh, components uh, in our uh, Dell Technologies validated design. Uh, so, uh, so we talked about all the compute servers, you know, VxRail, HCI, which is like the easy button, full stack management and integration into VMware. We have various powered server based on your needs. We talked about uh, all the accelerators and, and what those, uh, each of those capabilities are what's MIG and multi-node. Um, you know, we uh, talked about the networking architecture where just 100 gigabits uh, is, is uh, needed. And we finally talked about all the software from vSphere to uh, NVIDIA AI Enterprise. So these are all the, the components that are supported uh, uh, as part of the Dell Technologies validated design. That's something that we have validated in our lab and recommend to our customers. So how is this solution being used uh, today by customers? Well, we are already getting good feedback of customers. And Justin, could you talk about uh, some of our customer use cases and what they are saying? Absolutely, good stuff there, Bala. So obviously, you know, it's very good for us to tell you the story, the work that Bala's team have been going through. And we wanna do more than kind of just say, this is what you can buy. We are actually getting our hands deep with this because we wanna simplify your AI journey. We wanna give you the insights so that you make the right decisions. And the expertise with some of the configurations that we've talked about hopefully help you understand that and, and, and make Dell credible here with the validated design for AI. But don't just take it from us. We have customers that are using this today. As mentioned earlier in the presentation, our customer University of Pisa, they've been using this flexibility to help spin up and build uh, AI environments for their data scientists in a self-service consumable manner. And this has been able to provide predictable configurations, standardization, and secure environments with the tools and frameworks that are needed. And obviously using the same environment, uh, adding GPUs has helped reduce costs. But not just the University of Pisa, the Miami Dolphins have been using this system as well with the storage, the power scale, to help optimize the use of uh, fan interaction and using computer vision to be able to help and work with the uh, stadiums and provide a, a return on an investment just by moving to a power scale platform with the VxRail for their compute AI workloads. And you can see some of the savings that they're planning to have as they go through this, uh, as they've already implemented this and, and adopting that. But also just to kind of capture why Dell Technologies for AI, we have our executive briefing centers, we have solution centers, we have our specialty sales, staff that can answer these questions. They can help you get to, to where you need to go. We have unmatched expertise and we're providing you with choice. We could say, here's how everything can be done and do it yourself. We're thinking more than that. We want to give you that simplified experience, that turnkey experience. And so giving you that choice allows you to, to choose the best outcome with the in-house uh, experience and skills that you have to deliver AI in the enterprise data center. We can collaborate uh, with, with Dell through these customer, customer solution centers where you can do POCs. We can explore demos and proof of concept, pilot uh, technologies with our AI experience zones, and we can help innovate. We have a flagship innovation lab here in Austin, Texas, where we have a couple of the uh, world's the largest supercomputers. And then obviously as part of the AI centers of excellence, we're able to accelerate with the leadership that Dell has provided with, to its other customers and share that and, and provide those best practices for you. And then just to wrap up, services and financing are also uh, options for you to help achieve your AI journey. Consulting, deployment, support, managed residency services are all available through Dell Technologies. And I'd like to thank you for your time. I'd like to thank Bala for his contribution today and say thank you. All of our outcomes are delivered on the link here, infohub.delltechnologies.com and you can click on work solutions to find AI and data analytics uh, outcomes. Thank you again.